Hello guys, welcome to my workbench. Today I am doing an introduction with some tips and notes of the Minicopter Diablo Nitro. I'm pretty excited about this kit. It's uh, pretty rare. I believe this is the second run of these kits. Um, I just want to share it with you and go over some things that I found. Um, some things caught me off guard uh, I didn't know about <clears throat> when I made the uh, purchase. So I would like to go over this kit with you and uh, share my thoughts and uh, everything that I found out along the way so far. So I ordered this kit from Chuck at Peak Aircraft um, here in the United States. Very nice guy to deal with. I um, believe they might have another kit in stock but I'm not sure. If not, he can get you more and more than likely. I believe uh, Minicopter still has some kits in stock. So if Minicopter has them, then he can get them more than likely. Anyways, um, there was a, uh, a backlog of pre-orders for this kit due to coronavirus, etc. Um, so there was a wait time, but that now with the coronavirus, uh, kind of getting out of the picture a little bit. Mini copters back up and running and producing parts and kits again. So there shouldn't be some exorbitant lead time anymore. Anyways, when you go to place your order for this kit, you need to be aware that this kit has a engine specific clutch on it. You need to specify which engine you are going to be running. Um, the clutch actually threads on to your crankshaft and OS and YS have different crankshaft threads so you will need to specify which engine you are going to be running also you have the option to pick which head you want to use they offer a rigid head and a dampened head I myself prefer a rigid head it has a quicker cyclic response quicker stops etc if I was run, if I was doing um, big air and smooth uh, flying, um, I would go with the dampened head. But being I um, like to try and fly more aggressively, um, I prefer a rigid head. It just feels better to me. Also, another thing you need to be aware of is that this kit uses a mini throttle servo. The cutout is not big enough to use a full throttle you have to use a mini I myself went with an Align DS530M metal cased servo I think you should get a metal cased servo as well uh, because your exhaust is going to be going right near that throttle servo and that metal case is going to help dissipate that heat so um, get yourself a metal case high voltage capable servo such as this DS530M. You need a HV capable servo because you're running straight off a 2S LiPo. Um, so those are the things you need to specify when you order the kit. Also when you order the kit you should be aware that this kit does not have a provision in the fan shroud for governor sensor magnets. It's pretty thin. I doubt you could drill one in there. You might be able to, but I wouldn't recommend it. So anyways, you're going to want to go ahead and get yourself a backplate mount for a governor sensor. I myself contacted Doug Darby. He makes a really trick uh, metal aluminum backplate mount, um, a backplate sensor mount. <clears throat> for your motor. So you can run a governor sensor right on your back plate. Um, speaking of custom parts while I'm on it, I uh, contacted Sangreet Samuel. He's on Facebook. You can look him up. And he makes this really trick uh, Venturi slash cold air intake for the the motor it goes right on your fan shroud like so and with this Venturi cold air intake 
it'll be mounted up inside the canopy like this while it'll be mounted to the frame but it'll be up in the canopy like this you can cut a hole in your canopy and uh, when you're running your canopy you'll get nice fresh cold air and you also get the venturi effect so it'll work even better he also makes these very nice carbon um, he makes these very nice uh, tail push rod holders I believe the kit came with some real cheesy ones um, so people were making these his is very nice it has a, bra a threaded brass insert and it's very nice and heavy duty it, it feels like it'll last forever uh, my kit I just found out actually came with a 3d printed tail push rod holder as well uh, it's completely it'll work completely fine don't the only um, thing I can find that makes this one not as nice is that it uses a nut here so that nut can spin inside this if you t over tighten it and um, you can lose that nut you know do it forming maintenance etc so I like sand griefs very nice cool thing about the heli uh, it comes with a 3d printed fan shroud that is very light um, this helicopter when it's uh, fueled up completely ready to fly with the canopy servos everything ready to fly um, supposedly weighs 9.6 pounds give or take uh, the only other heli that I've flown that, it, that was that light was a uh, Mikado Glogo and it was absolutely ballistic with a stock 91 so I'm putting a modified 96 SRX on here it's, it's really going to rip uh, going to the 96 SRX I modified it I did crank work I did case work I even modified the piston etc I'll be running a uh, it's called a power tune kit you can look up Gregor McGrath or Jay Treadway on um, Facebook so it's a conversion kit that allows you to run an OS carb on a YS and um, I've already tested it on a YS120 SRX that I modified and it the OS carb is, is leaps and bounds better than the YS uh, carb and regulator setup much finer tuning um, way easier to tune the needles are much finer adjustments it just all around way better uh, it probably makes more power to the way it delivers fuel so um, another thing uh, you should be aware of that this uh, supposedly this heli you can run up to 740 millimeter uh, main blades with 115 millimeter tails obviously being a nitro you're not going to want that want to run big blades like that but it's pretty cool that you can I'll be running 697 VTX I like the way they feel um, with 106 millimeter rotor tech tails I found that's a great combo um, the kit comes with a red tail pulley which gives you a tail ratio of 5.15 to 5.17 I haven't verified which one's correct I've got that information from two different sources but either way um, anything over a 5 ratio on a tail is going to give you great tail authority um, so that's very nice so when you start pounding on that nitro and you get a little too happy on the sticks and you bog that motor uh, that ratio is really good you're really going to appreciate that higher ratio it comes with a 10 millimeter main shaft so I use a uh, V-Bar Neo and I like to I, I use a V-Bar Neo with the Pro software and I like to level my swash all the way at the bottom all the way at the top and the middle always do the middle first and then I do the top um, after I level the you know get the swash arms level etc so being at the 10 boom you can use an aligned swash plate leveler uh, part number H70118T to get your swash plate perfectly level you can use a zip tie wrapped around the main shaft or eyeball it like some guys do I, I like to make sure it's absolutely dead nuts perfect it, it, it just flies better when you get it dead nuts perfect you know all those pros and whatnot that can 
level their swath by eye and whatnot, their fingers and their brains are quick enough to react and correct a swath plate that's not perfectly level. So uh, the first part of the manual, they um, tell you you need to file the frames, you got to round off the frames, and you got to square off the frames where your servo mounts go. So you need to square it off here, here, um, here, and here, here, and here. And then you also need to round this portion of the frame inside and outside. So I use this file right here. And what I found is that if you just do the corners, everything wouldn't line up perfectly. So I actually had to file this whole bottom down just the hair to get everything to line up perfectly. Um, you should be able to put this frame side on and just, you know, with your hands, not you, don't, you shouldn't have to manhandle it, and just be able to put a screw in with your hand. If you gotta start pulling and twisting and pushing on stuff to get that screw on and these bolt holes aren't lined up, then you know you got you gotta do some more filing. Also, if you have to push and pull and everything else, you might have too many shims in there on your main shaft. So make sure you get the correct shimming on the main shaft and make sure you file enough here. You don't need some big gap or nothing like that. You just want it to be perfectly square and allow everything to line up nice and square. The canopy, go ahead and show that off, is very, very nice, very high quality fiberglass work. Very, very nice. The only other canopy that I have found that is similar in quality and actually equal in quality has, was my old Henslet TVF. This is the best quality canopy I have seen besides the Henslets. So one thing you will have to do is you're going to need to trim out for your exhaust. Your exhaust is going to hit this canopy and you're going to have to trim out for that. Get yourself some painter's tape and go, cover it up and do a little bit at a time until you get it perfect. Protect your canopy with some painter's tape and take your time doing it. Um, when you're filing this curved portion of the frame, I used this half round file. As you can see, it's got a curve on it. And that allows you to get that curve very nice and easily. And you won't cut um, sharp spots when you go around the corners. With the flat file, you can potentially cut flat spots. If you have a half round file, I recommend you use it. Um, going to the build, some uh, tips and, and notes I found a error in the manual. <clears throat> when you go to mount the canopy uh, locators or post, whatever you want to call them, I'm trying to find the page here. On page 36, you will see the manual shows you use a button head screw and the spacer here. That is incorrect. There is no button head screw and there is no spacer. The canopy has a recess, I mean, I'm sorry, the frame has a recess cut in the frame for a concave screw without a spacer. So don't freak out and think you're missing a part. Also, I went ahead and I built this not according to the manual and I mounted my boom mounts um, before. So 
one thing to be aware of when you're when you mount these uh, boom mounts to your frame is you want to make sure they are perfectly square. And how to check if they're perfectly square is make sure your tension bolts are loose. You don't want them tight. And you can take your boom and easily slide your boom through those mounts without much resistance. If you really got to tug and yank and push and pull and, and pry on anything to get that boom in and out nice and easily, then your boom mounts are not square. You might have to fiddle with it a little bit to get it perfectly square. I didn't have much of a problem, but I did have to tweak it a few times. A couple times. So make sure you get those uh, boom mounts nice and square. Again, you know you got everything filed and fitted up correctly when you can put this thing together with your hand like that. Um, when you go to plumb your fuel tank, the fuel tank's a little different than most other heli kits out there. It comes with this bottle and this cap that screws on. You will have to drill the cap and you'll have to drill the bottle. It comes with the fittings that you need to plumb it up, but it comes with this um, subpar fuel clunk. I wouldn't use this. I will be using a Lynx. Um, I'm sorry, I'll be using, I found that a Saab fuel clunk is the best clunk out there. Um, the next, next best out there is the Lynx. Um, I will be running a header tank on this heli. So I ordered a Lynx, I mean I ordered a Saab clunk for the main tank and being I have so many Lynx clunks left, I'll be using a Lynx clunk in the header tank. It is, uh, I was also advised that this tank can wear here where it mounts, um, where it sits on your braces inside the frame. So what I plan on doing is taking some silicone, squirting some silicone on this tank, and then sitting the tank in there so that silicone will absorb those vibrations and keep the grit and grime from your nitro and the dirt and dust and all that from building up underneath here and wearing your tank out. When you uh, go to do your wiring, being this is a nitro, there's a lot of vibrations on a nitro, I recommend you get yourself some uh, braided uh, covering for your wires. I like to use this stuff right here. It's uh, made by wirecare.com. Quarter inch will fit uh, two to three wires, whereas if you're only running one wire, you can use the eighth inch stuff. Um, this is the flame retardant fray resistant scissor cut braided sleeving. Part number appears to be VVV-1. This is very good stuff, very high quality. You have to cut it with scissors. And it, when you cut it, you can take a lighter and burn the end a little bit to keep it from falling apart. Uh, I also like to use their, um, their shrink tube, which has a glue in it that'll help that shrink tube bond or sleeving won't be moving out you know all over your wiring and it allows you to form your wiring around the curve like on the servo lead coming out and going down to the frame some so get yourself some braided sleeve uh, covering because all your wiring mounts inside the frame mostly like so. So you're not going to be able to really see what's going on in there and if your wiring is moving around a whole bunch and shaping against this frame you could run into issues later. So you want to make sure you do it correctly. I like to use this uh, it's about 3 8 wide um, Align um, Velcro uh, battery straps and I just cut it and I wrap it around the braided sleeving and then zip tie it to the frame. 
what that does is it, it spaces the wiring off the frame and it also protects the zip keeps your zip tie from digging into the wiring and when you pull these zip ties real nice and tight the zip tie on any heli whether it be electric or nitro will eventually start digging into your wiring and you can cause a short or lose power to your servo and that will make you crash so do it right the first time um, I think that's about it so if I missed anything I will uh, make another video and if I find anything else as this uh, build progresses, I will make another video and I uh, hope you enjoy it.